The main task that I'm after today is Drake's eating my carrots. It's gonna be in the 90s again all week. One day it was like near 100, it said 97 degrees. This is not like ideal temperatures for planting carrots this week. Today I'm gonna show you how I combat that and how we're gonna get these seeds to germinate. I get near perfect germination. I've got some over here that are already germinated. I'll show you those today. I brought some like radish seeds, watermelon radish, and turnip seeds with me. So I want to fill these empty beds, I think, at this point. And I think it's August 21st, whatever, Saturday, something like that. If I start getting into next week, then I'm getting into September. Then it's getting a little bit late for me to start doing this. Anyways, I'm just going on and on about all kinds of stuff. We gotta go get these carrots planted. I'm running behind. Come on, let's go. I'm gonna show you how we do this. Okay, so I got the irrigation going for a few minutes. I just want to make sure that I got nice, moist planting beds for my carrots. So I'm planting these directly into compost. So I'm relying on compost to germinate them. Compost dries out much easier than soil. And then I'm going to run my tilther up and down it and just make sure I get a nice smooth planting bed. All right, y'all. So I'm planting Napoli carrots today. I bought them from Johnny's Selected Seeds. You can buy them from lots of places. I'm growing that because it's a 58 day carrot is what the seed packet says. So about 60 days. It'll take a little bit longer this time of year, but it's basically the fastest carrot that you can grow that is like super desirable for chefs. They love it. It's a super sweet carrot. I grow it to about six inches and takes about, take me about 75 days this time of year. A lot of carrots take closer to 100, up to 120 days this time of year. So I'm not trying to wait that long before I can harvest carrots, right? I'm trying to get these harvested before it gets cold out. So I brought two packs of Napoli carrots today, just in case 25,000 seeds in each packet. Now this is the Jang Seeder. And this is my main planting tool for direct seeding crops. Although I also use an Earthway seeder. Earthway seeder costs like $120 or something like that. The Jang seeder costs like $800, especially when you get into spending money on the extra seed rollers. So I use the Earthway seeder at first with great success. Is it dropping the seeds? I don't know. You don't know? What do you mean? Look. I think it is. Alright. That's all that matters. If you think it is, it probably, probably is. It just uh, plants the carrots closer together. You can't uh, singulate the seeds like you can with the jang. So like instead of doing four rows of carrots on a bed with the earthway, it's just gonna drop more seeds. So you just wanna do like two or three rows and then give your carrots more space to grow because they're gonna grow closer together. So that's how I would mitigate that. You can thin them. And I plant beets with the earthway seeder. I'll show you what the beets look like over here. We'll probably thin them a little bit today. I'll just go in and pull some out. It's uh, easier than hand transplanting and I've never found a way to singulate a seed well with the um, jang seeder. So it's a lot, I found it a lot easier just direct seed beets and then go thin them with the earthway. Okay, so I'm using the X24 seed roller on the jang seeder today and I get this information from the paperpot.co website. I'll go on Google, I press carrots jang and hit enter and it pulls up the paperpot.co, that URL link, I just press right on it, brings me right to that page. And then it tells you which seed roller to use with which direct seeded market garden crop. So that's how I figure all this out. Now, they tell you the right seed roller for the right crop. I use that perfectly it's great information but like all the information that diego gets for that website comes from uh eric at steadfast farm in arizona he's in a much drier climate so maybe he can grow his carrots like way closer together i, I do four or five rows of carrots on a bed you know so i don't use the exact spacing perfectly but it's good information for the seed roller and it's a good place to start all right at least gives you a guideline and then as you gain more experience you'll just kind of figure out what works best for you and what spacings right i'm doing four rows on a bed here and i'm setting my jang up with the 11 gear and the 11 gear which would gives me a one and a half inch spacing on my carrots with four rows on a bed i find that gives me a nice full size six inch carrot if i do any closer than that they just take forever to get up to any size when i go to harvest i'm just like getting all these little itty bitty carrots i'm just throwing out you know so i've learned to just go with a little bit wider spacing on my carrots and the jang also like works better when it's pretty full with seeds 
So that's why I brought like two packs of 25,000. I just like to make sure I fill this thing right up pretty good. Just carrot seeds so small. So that's 50,000 carrot seeds right there. Okay, so the tilter just kind of hooks up to a power drill and it helps me smooth out my planting bed. So it gets any chunks out of the compost and just helps the jang seeder slide through nice like butter, you know? This just kind of hooks in here. I've showed you guys this on videos before, so, but just for anybody in case it's brand new for you. Let's go get our beds prepped and then we'll get these carrots seeded. All right, y'all, so I got my beds all uh, tilted out, raked out nice and smooth. This bed over here is a little bit wider, so I think I'm going to try to fit five rows in that bed, uh, and then I'm going to fit four rows in these beds. So I start on the shoulders, and I plant the outsides first, and then I do the center so I can kind of eyeball and gauge nice even spacing, you know? So I'm going to go down this row, back up that row, and then I'll put two rows down the middle. Same on this. On, these one, on this one, I'll go up the sides, then back up the sides, and then one row down the middle with whatever I got left. So you always want to make sure your jang is dropping seed before you uh, before you start. Okay, cool. So I saw some seeds come out, so we're good. And then uh, as I push it too, I'm always looking to just make sure it's dropping seed. Because you don't want to do this and find out in two weeks that you didn't drop no seed, you know? So the next steps, just plan to direct seed of these into a deep compost mulch. Compost dries out faster than soil. If carrot seeds dry out at all, they will not germinate. I need to keep these pretty much saturated for the next seven to 10 days until I get germination. So to do that, I'm gonna run the irrigation right now for like 20 minutes. I'm just gonna let it roll. I go over here, we're gonna plant some watermelon radishes radishes and turnips over here and we're gonna come back here we're gonna hand water these in real nice and deep saturate that compost and then i'm gonna pull ag 50 frost blanket over this it's white it's gonna act as a mulch then we're gonna soak the ag 50 frost blanket we're gonna put all the irrigation on timers so the frost blanket is gonna protect the compost and keep it moist the frost blanket is gonna get saturated with water every day with the irrigation going off in my other farm i put drip lines under the fabric also and i'll set the drip lines off to help keep it more moist here i'm just gonna pay for extra water right i don't want to pay for the extra materials and labor of installing drip lines on this garden i'd rather just pay for the extra water so i'm just going to put the water off a little bit more and uh, pay a little extra for the water to keep it germinated i'm going to come over here every day and check on it until i get germination once i get germination i'm going to come over here every day and make sure they're getting sufficient water from the irrigation if there's any spots that are not i'm going to hand water it to make sure that these carrots get established once they get established and they start growing then it's kind of home free from there we'll end up getting enough rain probably and the carrots will search for the moisture right but to get them established the first three weeks they take a lot of attention but to get them to germinate you cannot let them dry out so there's a lot of methods you can use i'm going to use ag 50 frost blankets today because i have a boatload of i got 26 foot wide feet 26 foot wide pieces of it that are like 75 feet long so i'm probably just gonna fold one in half put it on top of this to get it to germinate and trap that moisture in well you know you could also just put a uh, shade cloth directly on top of the soil you don't really want hoops for this type of stuff i mean you could but like with the hoops the air still gets under there and it's uh more likely to dry out i like to have something sitting directly on the soil surface you could just use bed blankets if that's all you had you shouldn't have to go out and buy anything right you should have some type of material any type of white or light colored material is best because it reflects the sunlight uh i've used silage tarp before with the white side up so it's reflecting the sunlight that way if you got the black side when those seedlings come up you don't want to get too hot under there because it'll fry them you know i like the frost blankets because it's breathable so if it does rain the rain's going to penetrate the frost blanket as opposed to a tarp i like to use ag 50 and then i do find the carrots are fine if they start to sprout under there and i don't get them off right away the carrots will kind of push it up you know for a few days until i get there and get it off but it also keeps it moist so there's always some straggler seeds that need to germinate so it helps get those stragglers too so I'm going to run the irrigation off on these for a while while we go plant some other crops. And then we'll come back, hand water them, and put the frost blankets on. I'll show you how we do that. 
I got my beds prepped for watermelon radishes, radishes, and turnips. Anyways, we're doing Y24 roller with the uh, Hawker Ride turnips today. 11-11 gear in the Jang Cedar, five rows on the 30-inch bed. Now, one important thing about growing Hawker Ride turnips. So today, we're going to cover them just to get them to germinate in the heat. But then when I come back to uncover them, I always grow them under insect net no matter what the time of year. Because if I don't, then I get those little brown spots on them, which are from cabbage root maggots. So no matter what, I always grow Hawker Ride turnips under insect net. I'm going to do five rows of these Donato radishes on a bed next. I'm going to use an F24 roller on the Jang Cedar with the 1111 gear spacing. So that give me one and a half inches between my radishes so I get a nice big radish, you know? Five rows on the bed, so I'm gonna get a boatload of radishes. They're this big, I just sell them by the pound of restaurants. Rip the tops right off and then I'll bunch some up, bring them to the market with the tops on too. But for the most part, I'll just kind of put them in tubs and store them. Uh, and I'll continue to plant radishes throughout the winter. It's a good crop for me. That's just it, right? It takes 20, 20, 30 days to grow radishes. And you just throw them in a tub and they last for a month. The last thing we got left to do is plant watermelon radishes and then pull the shade cloth over this stuff and then get everything watered in one last time. Then we got to get out of here. It's getting late. It's getting hot. I'm getting tired. I guess. But watermelon radishes, I want to do at a four inch spacing. So to get a four inch spacing with a 12 hole roller, I look on the front here. It says 12 hole, right? And I go, I find four inches right here. And then it tells me I want the... 11 in the front and the 13 in the back all right and then i'm growing red meat watermelon radishes i don't got many in here i, I wish i had more sometimes it gets confusing trying to order them online figuring out how many per gram or whatever you know should order more all right y'all so i got all the beds planted now it's getting hot it is time to just get this watered in and then get the uh shade cloth pulled over it all right y'all so i just got the overhead irrigation going off over these beets and carrots that were direct seeded last week i got all this stuff covered up watered in everything over here is covered up watered in we're gonna call it a day and we'll come back and check on this in a few days and make sure everything germinated i'll see you in a few days all right y'all so it is wednesday morning and i just came over the leased property to get some work done I pulled that shade cloth off. I ended up putting a double layer shade cloth on top of my radishes and turnips. Just kind of trap the moisture and get germination. As you can see, I got pretty much 100% germination on that. It's been 90 degrees every day and I've got no irrigation over there. I just came over, hand watered it once a day with the shade cloth on top of it to trap in that moisture. And that just makes it so I get perfect germination. Now I'm going to take, now this is going to be 100 degrees today and tomorrow. So, I mean, it's rough. This is all the broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cabbages, uh, turnips, radishes, all that stuff that we planted a couple weeks ago, you know. So I'm going to take that shade cloth that I just took off my uh, direct seed of crops over there. And I'm going to put it over top of all of these broccolis, cabbages and everything. Uh, is Like I said, it's going to be like 100 degrees today. So I don't want to come back over here. It's like kind of early in the morning. It's probably around like 9 a.m., 9.30 right now. Uh, you can see the parents are dropping the kids off to the forest school back there. The kids go to school in the forest in the little lean-to classrooms. And then there's a little schoolhouse back there. All right, y'all. So I was putting the shade cloth on, right? And I just noticed there's like some little holes in some of the uh, brassicas, cabbages, broccoli, and Brussels sprouts. So, you know, rather than ignore that, I lifted it up and I could see the caterpillars. So there's like not a lot of them. It's like one little tiny caterpillar on each plant, you know what I mean? But rather than ignore that, I got on my hands and knees and I went under the insect net and I found every single caterpillar and I squished. Most most people probably would never do that, right? And then what? You just lose your crop, right? It took me about 30 minutes probably. Got under there, squished all the caterpillars, and you know, we're good. So we'll just keep an eye on that. I just kind of got the insect net on because it can keep the butterflies from coming and laying its eggs on there. But sometimes these army worms, they come from up in the soil. So they get under there anyway. So that's what it was. And uh, so I nip that in the bud. 
So uh, I'm gonna put the shade cloth over this now and get out of here. I stopped by here on Saturday after the market and I pulled the fabric off of these carrots. It had been exactly one week and they were starting to germinate. So I just pulled the thing off and, and took off, got out of here. It rained last night, so that's outstanding. It's got rained on and then I just kind of hand watered them in. Everything's nice and moist, but you know, like as the seeds, you can see they've germinated well. But there's still some, if you don't continue to keep them nice and moist at this stage, there's still some that'll germinate and they'll never germinate if you let it dry out. Also, once those seeds do sprout, that tap root is not deep at all. It's not going down into the soil, it's in the compost. So if you let that compost dry out, then your little seedlings are just gonna die pretty easily and you'll lose a lot of your carrots. So you still wanna stay up on the moisture once they sprout. But I just wanted to come over here, show you guys what it looks like and how I get near perfect germination using this method. It was miserable last week, it was like, over 100 degrees three days in a row it was so bad i was driving riding my harley back and forth from one farm to the other all day every day all week last week just making sure everything was okay i took the insect net off of the uh the interplanted garden over here today uh the caterpillars were just getting up under there you know so i just went and squished them all and uh nipped those in the bud you know the plants i use the insect net to get them established but now that they're good and established those plants are going to get way too big i can't keep them under the insect net so it's uh the insect net is a good tool to be able to get those crops established so they don't just get ate by critters as soon as you plant them because that's really what will happen a lot of the time you know the critters will, they go after those little tender seedlings but once they grow a little bit and it's less of a concern and you just want to stay up on those caterpillars i'm just squishing them with my fingers you just walk up you can see them. i, I just squish them uh, so that's the best way I could stay on top of that. So then I also thinned my beets over here. I'll show you that. I just kind of pull out, I, I, I seeded them with the earthway seeder and then I just came over, it's been a few weeks and I just really plucked out. You know, I find I get a good size beet like that, but the earthway just drops about 75% too much seed, but it's still cheaper to buy seed than it is to raise seedlings and hand transplant them in my opinion. And then I'll show you the other direct seed of crops over here. Everything germinated perfectly, looking great. So hopefully you got some. I'm out of this and I'll see y'all in the next one. Thanks guys.